Welcome back to... <laughs> Welcome back to another battle report folks and what is the penultimate game in our little improvised campaign in the uh, of the battles in the run up to Stalingrad. And now in this game we're going to be using some heavy armour. We've stayed away from it for fear of it just uh, encouraging an arms race but we thought we're going to give it a go. We're going to be using Enemy at the Gates and you can see one on the front there, a KV so we thought early, early mid-war so to speak. We've got to get the KVs out and give them a try. We'll see how that goes. So it's going to be a Soviet mixed tank of it, and they're going to be fighting a Grenadier company who are going to be defending from Cross of Iron, a fairly similar force to what you've seen before. But Brian's tweaked it a bit to try and get some heavy anti tank, but mobile anti tank. No uh, 88s, basically. And we'll see if that's a good decision or not as the game progresses. So over to the game and then after that we'll come back for a recap. So the mission is Bridgehead. As you can see it's got a very compressed deployment area for the Defender with delayed and scattered reserves. But you know the advantage with scattered reserves is you can arrive on the flank of your opponent's armour. You won't get too many shots, so if you don't kill them, you may well get clobbered back, but you could arrive and against these two plus to hit Soviets, it could be quite, quite useful. Um, so the, the Soviets have got options of attacking from the front to try and protect themselves from that flank attack or taking advantage of the flank deployment and try and get in closer and quicker. And you can see uh, the the defender has, um, oh wait, the Germans are defending in this game, sorry folks. Uh, the defender has an ambush and it's delayed and scattered um, reserves. Okay, let's go over to deployment. Let's start with the Germans. So we'll go through the list as well as the deployment. First of all, the mission's got minefield, so Brian is forcing me to go over the hill if I want to go that way, blocking off that junction there, blocking off the way between the two walls, that far end of the station and between the wall and the edge of the table. So he's trying to force me into kill zones and also into uh, cross checks. So what he's got defending is a take on the Grenadier company that he used before. So that's going to be two platoons plus company command a platoon of mortars, no heavy machine guns this time because I wanted to increase his anti-tank capacity. He's got his four pack 38s, three armoured cars because there's a couple of points going spare. Now he could have got a one heavy machine gun or three armoured cars so the armoured cars might be more vulnerable than a heavy machine gun but um, they can maybe be a bit of a firefighting force and be more effective than a very one very static heavy machine gun but we'll see. Oh, in ambush, four martyrs. So that's four anti-tank 12, um, which could be quite nasty. And then in reserve, the much debated, and please add to this debate, folks, uh, Panzer Fours. That's 40 points for three tanks. But they're anti-tank 10, and they may well be dealing with KVs. So compared to anti-tank 9 on an upgunned Panzer Three with that firepower and extra range, I don't know, we'll see. And that's what the Germans will be using as a turn counter. I don't know if you've seen the video for how I made this guys, but as you can see, lots of infantry figures around it, flames of war, and it's got an interchangeable turret, um, or top, so this is the German version. So the Soviets are starting the far corner, you can probably guess from my deployment I've gone for the pincer approach to this game. There's seven T-34s over there, a battery of six medium mortars, then a big clump over here. We've got four T-60s, a 15 base SMG platoon, 
and five KV ones. It's a heavier version. The um, the KV one S is the same points. It's got two points less armor on the front, but it does not have overworked, and it moves really, really quick. But it's not a heavy tank, you know. Um, I want to play with heavy tanks, which is lots of armor on the front, moving slow. Um, so we'll see how they go. And then the Soviets have got their turn counter here. It's not as extravagant as the over-engineered Germans, but as you can see the base will move up for each turn. If we get to turn 9, I'd be surprised. I think they could have a lot of burning Soviet wrecks uh, in short order. But uh, over to turn 1, Soviets get first turn. Soviet turn one was mostly about movement. These guys all dashed. I wanted to try and prevent that hill being used as an ambush point. And he did a follow me. The platoon failed, but it, at least it got him four inches, which was enough to effectively make it very difficult to use that as an ambush point. It could still be, but it's not so good. The infantry managed to follow me after a dash. The KVs are being cagey as are the T-34s, but only in a sensible kind of way, just keeping themselves in cover as much as possible. And the mortars need a 60 range in, because there's terrain everywhere over there, uh, did not manage to range in. So, not a very eventful turn for the Soviets, but they're on the march. German turn one. They got reserves, straight away. Uh, the armor Oh, and they rolled a 1, which is over in this corner, 16 inches off the corner. Uh, the infantry just had got on the ground and nothing to really shoot at. The armour cars have positioned themselves with a bit more cover and then they might be able to intervene against these T-70s. The Marders have stayed out uh, in ambush still and the Panzer IV had a couple of choices, they could have gone defensive or offensive. The um, defensive route would be just to hold themselves back and take on the T-34s at range, take advantage of cover. But this minefield is actually preventing them from excuse me, coming along here. The other minefield is placed so that you can enter the table within 16 inches of that corner. But this one here is a sensible place to put a block in minefield, but it meant they would only be able to hide here, which it wasn't really up to much. Much better to get behind the T-34s. And you've got three shots, three hits, three kills, so can't do much better than that. Um, some of the T-34s will be able to stand and shoot, but the other ones will have to move. And that's very much to the, um, the Germans' advantage, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, so, it's game on. Soviet turn two. So, this was still a general advance. It's mainly tactical moves apart from these guys who dashed. Tactical was unsuccessful following these, so they got themselves up in a position to pretty much protect these guys from the martyr ambush. So, Brian's going to have to think about what his options are for bringing that in. But it's certainly went better for the Germans over here. Two T-34s stay still, and two moved up. And... These guys needed five to hit, as did these guys actually all needed five to hit, but one of them at least was past uh, the front armour. Uh, and that one hit, and uh, Panzer IV failed to save, but then two up for the firepower, oh my goodness. These Panzer IVs are in a very good position to finish off those T-34s. But you know, the mortars actually ranged in. They've got three anti-tank guns and two mortars under there, and they had two mortars and two anti-tank guns, but they all saved. But we'll see what happens next time. So, it's looking good in terms of killing tanks for the Germans so far, but maybe a little bit scary in terms of holding on to the objective. So, we'll see what Brian can do in the next turn. So, German turn two. The armor cars failed a blitz, but they've moved out to get their cannons um, in line of sight of the T-60s. 
the anti-tank guns. The threat's come from that direction now. So they moved out from under the template and they're assuming that the T-34s will all get killed. Or if they don't, they'll get the, the guns turned around in time. But they're there really to repel tank assaults because they can't do much to a KV on the front. Not, not very much on the side either. Uh, the oh the mortars, I forgot to mention the mortars killed one Soviet mortar last turn. This turn, they, even though they were now ranged in, they didn't get any casualties. Uh, they managed to unpin as did the guns by the way. And then far as shooting goes over this side, infantry and anti-tank guns opened up. Uh, I was able to mistaken target all but one hit uh, onto the guys behind the wall. So I got bulletproof cover, one base got killed and that was from one of the anti-tank guns. The Panzer IVs kind of under-delivered, they're a bit underwhelming. This turn they only managed to get um, four, well four out of six hits is probably okay, but they managed to kill one bail one. So there's still a chance that a bit of luck on the Soviet side could result in a pretty much weakened Panzer IV platoon, but we'll see. And we'll see what the martyrs might do perhaps to try and deal with these KVs and um, there's no easy way to get into assault you'll notice they really have to come around the back way mm. so we'll see what um, I managed to come up with Soviet turn three so oh I've something I forgot to do a move with these guys I'll do that later uh, the T60 stayed put, managed to kill and bail an armor car. The KV some moved up, some stayed still, tried shooting at anti tank guns with a couple of hits but no success. Infantry fired at the moving rate of fire against the dug in German infantry. And then over here they just stayed put. And what you will see is no smoke plumes, just two bailed out markers. So they're riding their luck over there. Um, We'll see if the T-34s ride their luck back. And then what happened over here was, whoops, let's see if I can show you the last man standing in the church there. There was a small assault and a small counter assault because uh, in here there was the second in command. It was a good observation post for the mortars, but they were able to launch an assault from here and there. There was almost no counter fire uh, just because of the way um, the way things were in terms of line of sight and such like. Uh, the um, four bases got in, they killed second in command, some grenadiers, two grenadiers, counter attack, that was all they could really fit in and land blows on to the, the Germans. So um, those four Soviets fought against those two Germans until eventually there was just one Soviet left alive. Germans couldn't counterattack, so they had to break off and they, they bailed out Armour Car, which is no great loss, but it, it was captured. Uh, and now I can do a consolidation move with these guys, which is quite handy. So over uh, to Brian for the Germans um, third turn. German turn three. So the ambush finally got popped. Uh, there's not all, they're kind of relying on luck to a degree to get any kills at range, but you know, they've got to get in the game. Uh, the Pack 38s dug in and then stayed got on the ground. The infantry fired at the Soviet infantry and never got any hits or any kills, sorry. The mortars moved the fire from the Soviet mortars onto the church and managed to get they got no hits on the guys in the church, but Two guys outside the church went under the template and ended up uh, getting hit and failing the save. Um, the Marders did terrible in the shooting, but they still managed to bail one KV and one of them managed to knock out a T-60, which is still a threat to them. And then the Panzer IVs finally did it and killed off those T-34s. They then tried a shooting scoot, but failed. They've got to get over here now and um, put quite a strong force together to hold on to these objectives. So we'll see if I can get any progress with these guys bearing in mind now that I'm under a 
orange then mortar bombardment. Soviet turn four. With the death of the T-34s, I really have to pull the T-60s back. If they get killed, my formation will break. So it's probably not a very good balance in the list. You're probably better with Valentines, but I don't have any. Um, so these guys are going to have to do it all. The infantry failed to unpin, unfortunately. Um, they tried to dig in as well. Failed. The KVs did some shooting. Managed to kill a mortar. The infantry added some weight of fire into that. It was enough to pin the mortars, but not to do any more damage. And the Soviet mortars lifted their barrage to try and bring it down in here. But they, um, it didn't range in. So... Over to Brian to see if he can stop these brutes. German turn four. So the cavalry will see if they're needed. They're rushing over. The mortars didn't unpin. They got this all dug in and just got on the ground. And as far as shooting goes, the infantry have just stayed going to ground as have the anti tank guns, um, trying to make it so it's very hard to get pins on them. And then the Marders fired and I rolled a couple of ones for my save, so there's one dead and one bailed KV. Uh, we'll see if that KV gets back in. If it doesn't, they're starting to get whittled down in good time for the arrival of the Panzer IVs. There wasn't a lot of um, shooting and scooting. Brian just decided to step out. Make sure of getting some more shots on them. He wouldn't be able to get everybody back and within command distance, so he may as well keep as many target options as possible and spread out the hits. Mm -hmm. Soviet turn five. So the bailed out KV got back in. Brian did actually decide to do a blitz in the end because one of his tanks was going to be sitting in the open, one of his martyrs sitting there. So he successfully shoot and scooted the one that was in the open into cover, the rest just stays put. Uh, the infantry unpinned but thought about going forward but there's just far too much open ground to cross on a four up save. So they tried to dig in again and failed. The um, KVs, three of them had to move up to get shots. One had a shot through there. It missed. These two here, or these three rather, two fired at the one you can see destroyed managed to get a hit and this one here managed to get a six against him so two martyrs over there, I wasn't expecting that um, some good dice rolling for the Soviet sat turn compared to the T-34s um, but they're running out of assets we'll, we'll see what happens when the, uh, the Germans counter fire against these guys if they keep rolling once for the save they're in big trouble, if they don't they can start chewing through things. Oh, and I'm within eight inches of this objective because I'm in possession of this church. So I'm staying in the game whilst I'm hopefully chewing through things. German turn five. So the Panzer IVs tried to do a blitz so they can move all three up and into line of sight, but failed. They then fired at the KVs and missed. The Marders got a good few hits, uh, one each on all these guys, but only managed to bail. They, they, they rolled a one, so it could have been destroyed. The infantry opened up to try and deal with some of these guys, but only got one hit. Uh, the ranged down mortars managed to get another base. The anti tank guns are just staying put just now for fear of an impending or potential assault at some point. Soviet turn six. The um, the mortars managed to kill a right tank gun, didn't kill any infantry. The KVs were able just to sit still and they got one hit and killed a martyr. The infantry opened up on the German infantry and got one, two hits and they were both saved. So 
the objectives, guys. It's all going to come down to these objectives. We could just have this big Mexican standoff shooting at each other, but that's not going to win the objective for me. And also, Brian needs to get me out of this church to get a win for himself. So we'll see if we can actually get a conclusion here. Chairman turn six. So, a couple of things. Marder stayed. The infantry didn't unpin any tank guns, dead. Panzer IV moved around. Got a shot here, one hit. Um, but it was on the turret. Best you could do was a bail, so nothing happened there. The Marder fired, got a hit, but it saved. But then, something I forgot about. <laughs> I should have piled as many guys into that church as possible. Um, everything opened up on two guys in the church, and there was a ranged in mortar barrage as well, and they died. So, I've nobody with any inches in this turn six. So the Germans have managed to hold on. Uh, that's a bit, I thought it was going to be uh, going better for me there, but I should have been more aggressive with my KVs and focus less. I've seen this in other games actually. You focus so much on killing the martyrs, you forget about the objective. I just... I did try shooting scoots with them last turn to move them, but even then I thought I'm moving off to get the the mortars, and that would have put me with any inches of that, I suppose. Uh, so that's a sore lesson for me then. Remember the objectives, guys. I was just talking about them as well, but um, I thought I'll move off after I've killed the martyrs. But no, you've just got to keep pushing as the game gets on. That's, I mean, I've even got it built into my turn counter here, you know, if it goes green, amber, red, you know, as a warning, the um, victory conditions are beginning to become relevant. So there you go, um, I'll have a recap for you uh, to camera, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed that game, and it's quite interesting oh, to see these guys, I think you're only going to really deal with them with 88s, and that's why we're not using these a lot because then it just becomes an arms race. But I'll talk about that more to camera. So, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, I kind of threw it away, but maybe in another situation I wouldn't have, but sometimes when you're recording games and videos and so on, you can miss the obvious, but it's still a very good lesson. I've seen it happen so many times. People just forget about objectives. They don't necessarily walk off them when they're defending, though I have seen that, uh, but they do forget victory conditions and as an attacker you've got to push on and be aggressive as a defender you've got to at some point be aggressive and push back but anyway that game um i wasn't quite used to how, how a, a, a tank over worked i think brian was quite familiar with the um the german makeup the german company it was a tricky one for him getting an ambush deployed in that little tight little box in the back of the board uh, otherwise, uh, he was fairly comfortable with what went on and played the Germans as you would expect. I wasn't used to the, the tank of air. I mean, as you'll see, I forgot my formation includes infantry and mortars, so I could have used my T-70s and gotten about, gotten about them. That would have got me very, very close to victory because I could have assaulted his mortars potentially and got on and threatened the other objective and stayed in the fight. But the main... Learning point for us in this game is going to be heavy armour and you'll see even Marders went to tank 12 um, they've got to get in close to stand a, a 1 in 3 chance of forcing a firepower which isn't very good but if you're a Marder you need to be at distance and use your standoff range and your shooting and scooting and blitzing and everything so you need bigger guns so if, if you're playing these kind of games with your friends bear that in mind you are going to escalate things. Um, if you're playing it in a tournament and your opponent's not brought any big guns and you're Soviet, then you're laughing. Just be careful, watch those victory conditions. Watch the rest of your company. But for the games that we're playing, we don't want to bring late war into mid-war. We'll have some of that in Kursk, um, to the extent of the German side. And we will be moving on to Kursk games in the not too distant future. But heavy armour, in these early mid-war, even in the desert, for instance, you know, when you've got Panzer 3s and Panzer 4s, like anti-tank 9, anti-tank 10, it's, um, it's, it's going to very much set the, the flavour of the game. So, go that way if you want, folks. It comes down to what you get from the game and what you enjoy it, but me and Brian are quite happy 
with how we're doing our early mid war and we'll keep the heavies out of it just now but stay tuned for what's going to happen when we start doing our Kursky game, Kursky games because there's so much nice heavy German armour and a bit of heavy heavy-ish Soviet armour um, that can get brought in as well so stay tuned for the final battle in this little mini campaign it's going to be in the streets of Stalingrad itself um, we've recorded it already I'm just putting it all together and um, we'll share that with you uh, after um, you've had a chance to view this one and so thanks for watching folks if you enjoyed it please subscribe it helps us build the channel and um, helps YouTube spread the channel further to other people who may be interested in Flames of War.